Hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to some more Station Ears as we get back underway. Uh, I'll address a quick couple of things. It was interesting. In the last section, I had uh, one issue broached by two different people from two different angles, and one was what I would say the right way and one was the wrong way. Someone pointed out that um, I could be cooking these alloys in larger batches. I think it was something to the line of, you know, hey, you know, you're probably going to need to use all these, so there's no harm in cooking a whole bunch of you know, instead of doing the very small test amounts that you're doing at the moment. And I'm like, that's fair enough. And then, then there was other people, there was someone else that was saying, yeah, I don't know what you're doing. I'm not sure why you don't just cook it. You know, why only cook it in a small amount, right? And now that, that to be honest, like we're all friends here, we're all switched on. That's kind of uh, uh, borderline insulting because it's intellectually dishonest. Anyone that knows what I'm doing understands that I'm actually smelting at these small levels just because I'm testing. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I'm obviously massaging my ratios in there, and I don't want to end up with a big blob of reagent. Like, I think it's probably fair to say you know exactly why I'm smelting at these amounts, but I feel like the second person, I can't even remember who it was, but in that particular scenario, what they're actually kind of saying, if you want to read between the lines, is I, I want you to do it the way I'm saying you should do it. And I'm sort of like, well, no, to whoever that was, you know, whether you're a first-time commenter or a thousand-time commenter, um, get fucked. <laughs> because I will smelt at the amounts that I want, and I will test, and you're just going to have to sit with the fact that you know exactly why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it, uh, as opposed to doing it the way that you want to do it. But like I said, I'm all right with gentle suggestion is fine as well, like pointing out, hey, you know, like the first person. Anyway, I'm, I'm not trying to gripe too much, but it was interesting for those who can't seem to understand the difference between sort of backseating and sort of just trying to tell me how it's done as opposed to help, that was a good example from the last one. Um, it's, uh, another thing worth probably mentioning as well, people are sort of trying to go, oh, the perfect ratio burn is two to one. All right, so there's another component to the burn a lot of people don't understand is that it also does it in a very set sort of metric unit amount, which isn't open to everyone to know. It's actually kind of, well, I don't know, I'll say secret. Even if you do a two to one ratio at varying volumes, it's not always actually going to burn that cleanly. There's going to be a uh, remainder. Say, for example, it was one bloody cubic litre in, in a two to one amount or whatever, and you were burning one and a half at two to one. Only one of the, that one litre will burn. I don't know what the amount is. I'm just using just an example amount, right? Only that one litre of two to one ratio will burn. The rest will eject as waste. This is why even if you do perfect two to one or as perfect as you can, given the fact that it's like 6.66 .66 recurring, you know, that sort of thing, you will always get waste because it doesn't burn perfectly in the two to one ratio at volume variance. So um, so people that are sweating about that, so I understand, I know, I appreciate you telling me. Also bear in mind, the thing I'm sort of massaging is I was like happy with say the, the temperature, but not so much the pressure. So I'm thinking, how do I increase the, uh, the, the pressure and not the temperature? Now I might not have verbalized this. So everyone's going, oh, you just kept putting more oxygen in when you need to put more vo volatile in. So, well, no, what I'm actually trying to do is force the burn of the scrap volatile if I can. Like uh, actually, arguably the two to one burn ratio that people talk about is not the most efficient way. If you want to kind of be safe and try and have a clean waste burn, it would probably be something like a one to 10 ratio. Like you just keep putting in, well, I mean, I'm just sort of theory crafting here, but if you flooded it with oxygen, hypothetically, you could get to a scenario where you have no waste volatile at all. So it's the cleanest burn possible. But no, people just want to go with the wiki and what they've been told. Anyway, so my point is, I might sound a little bit miffed, but what I'm saying is instead of jumping to tell me how you think it needs to be done, consider that maybe I'm doing it a certain way for a certain reason. Anyway, let's have a have a look here. And I will do my best to explain the method behind the madness. Um, because the fun of the smelting process is supposed to be the nuance of the different temperatures and the different pressures, right? Not just put two to one in and problem solved forever. That's no fun. And I, I'd almost guarantee the developers feel that way as well. There shouldn't be a hard answer like that for all the different alloy, well, alloys. But if that's how it is at the moment, so be it. But um, I'm going to continue experimenting. Anyway, I'll finish waggling my finger. Um, 
Let's see. So that's cooling down pretty easily. All good and well. Um, how much do we have in there, actually? Almost 0% H2. That's probably... Actually, it's not a bad example of what I was sort of talking about. The H2 waste that we have is so small, and we have a lot more O2 waste, right? So, you know, perspective team. Arguably, what I've done is a cleaner burn. All right. We've got our tank around here. I'm curious what this is like. It's very cold. Yeah, I won't harp the point. But look, I'm I'm open. I love the open discussion and the conversation and uh, and the the just general contributive effort from most, right? But you know, I'm, I'm not a dummy either. So let's let's not be intellectually dishonest as well. I'm going to do it my way, and some of you just have to suck eggs and deal with that. Um, I'm going to vent this straight in. What was the temperature? It was about a hundred degrees. MPA. Uh... Something this this leaves us open for an interesting experiment to happen. I know I've got the vacuum going. What if I turn this off? And we just let it be free circulation. The room will fill with gas. Yeah, see, we've got the pressure coming up, the temperature coming up. I wonder if we can, in fact, air cool this system in the Martian atmosphere of whatever it is, 2 kPa. Yeah, look, our temperature's definitely coming up. I mean, we don't have any H2 in the atmosphere, so even as hot as it gets, what's the worst that could happen? It could overheat the walls and that, and they could hit a melting point, you know what I mean, within the internal sort of their, their structure. See, because it's getting warm very fast. But it is, again, like I said, a tiny bit of pressure. It's cool. You can see the particles moving through and out. So they're clearly cycling. It is creating sort of like a cooling cycle. Yeah. We might let that experiment run for a bit. Like I said, worst case scenario, it just gets really hot. and might set some things on fire. All right, so... Continuing on. We might end up rebuilding the furnace from the moon back in the day where, and, and try and come up with a little bit more nuance and control. Because uh, even if, for all my point against the people telling me how it is in their mind and I have to do it their way, and then also me sort of, and my brute force way of doing things a lot of the time, we're, we're actually all doing the same thing wrong, which is... I want to smelt this stuff, so I'm just going to jam fucking ice in until the problem solved. Ultimately, right? We might dis we might differ on the 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 ice and all that sort of stuff, but we're not really solving any engineering problem, are we? We're just going and saying, "Fuck it, let's just jam the ice in and see what happens." And I'm sort of like, uh, "That's not that's not what I want to do." What I, I would love if we could set up like a sort of system, like a console or something like that, where it would actually smelt the specific, specific gear, you know, like sensibly, as as opposed to just rolling the dice. Anyway, but as we covered, I want to make the basic resources now, right? If I were to empty that, it should come out as dodgy reagent, right? Which we don't necessarily want. Wouldn't it tell me it would be reagent? I guess not. Anyway. What is that at? That's still at a fair pressure and a fair temperature. I mean, I suppose it's night time. We might as well. Well, I mean, it's gone to day. My plan was just to clean and purge the whole fucking thing and start again, right? Call me old-fashioned, call me an industry engineer, but just continuing to pile more and more fucking react reactants into it d until it does what you want is not fucking good practice. That's not really what I want to do. Um, so, 
Fuck this. I'm going to purge it. We'll see how we go. Again, I didn't put a back pressure regulator in it to properly purge. It's not like we're adding a huge amount of H2 into that mixture anyway. I mean, it's at 1%. 80 degrees. I have concerns about that. Two KPA. I think that might be the saving grace of this, to be honest. That's still a bit too warm, isn't it? I guess it's got the same as ambient. Oh, wait, hang on. No, no, no. I'm not. Oh, 95 degrees. Oh, shit. 500 KPA. 1%. I think there's a, I think there might be a minimum percentage. I can't remember. Mm, that's distressing me. I don't like that at all. Um, all right. Well, what are you going to do about it, Scarlet? Well, I want to... I want to start sorting that shit into with atmospherics, right? That's what I will actually want to do right now. I feel like my waste tank is getting too much pressure, too much heat, and the wrong ratios. No. So I I want to fix that. Okay. Um, atmospherics is probably going to be the least fucking around, right? Iron, gold, copper. No, no crowbar. Did I just put my fucking crowbar in there? Just put that there. It's probably safer. Did that blow over from one of the other dig holes that I did? I think it might have. Three gold, then four copper will probably do the job. All right, we already have a fuck it. We'll just cook that whole lot. And I've got a little tin stack on me down here. Alright, so we'll let that cook. We'll get some atmospherics going. Alright, so that'll allow us to... We can put up to two filters in the back of it, if I recall. But how are we going to store all this stuff properly? I suppose... And cooling's a fucking huge problem. Because the temperature does come up. 18 degrees. Because you still need a coolant line at the end of the day. Right? And then you have a look at this. See, that's still only... It's still 3 degrees. I guess maybe I'm just spoilt. Three degrees sitting in the direct sun at four MPA, right? Three degrees is pretty good. You know, you see, you hear me slip in my position. I'm, like I said, I'm used to the moon where it's it's pretty much just absolute. That's it, like vacuum cooling. Vacuum cooling might be the trick. 
right? Because that's how the game wants to go. That's working as intended. Yeah, okay, now we're starting to think. So if I create a vacuum room, What I'm, okay, so here's my quandary that I'm probably not verbalizing very well, is that ultimately, to have cooling, the answer of infinite power does not equal infinite cooling. It equals infinite heat, sure, but like at a rudimentary level, we can see here, this is our cooling tank for inside our, inside our system in there. We, we haven't been using it or anything like that. But essentially, for those who aren't clear, if I turn that machine on, it's going to exchange the heat between this tank and the room, right? And this tank that's sitting at three degrees or whatever. But essentially, if that room keeps getting fucking hotter, a la with um, smelter waste gas, which is really hot, our coolant's going to get hotter and hotter. And then we're going to run into a real fucking problem. So th your limit is your actual coolant that you use. And... What I'm sort of wanting to come up with is a system to keep your coolant cool. And I can't help but think that maybe... Maybe making a totally vacuum room will do it. So we could run a fan infinitely like this, and that's fine because we can create infinite power with, with solar panels and all that sort of shit, right? So we tap our infinite resource to make an infinitely vacuumed room. I think that's how you have to do it if you talk about all the components of these systems. Because if I were to use some sort of atmosphere to cool the room, you know, like we were talking about on the moon with like X or something like that, um, it's still going to have its limits. I guess, I guess the only other thing that you can sort of tap is at night time... with the cool air of outside. Okay, so that's the thought. We would have infinite air that's at negative 16 degrees, but it's at 2 kPa, right? Okay, hang on, let me think about this. So if I made if I made a room and we did it back to front, so we created a suction, so the fan constantly sucked in air, at least at night time it did, we wouldn't want it doing it at daytime. Problem is the pressure is just so fucking low, right? Oh, this is killing me. How hot are you these days? All right, you're coming down pretty quickly. But that's obviously because it's relative 16 degrees. Is 16 degrees going to be too hot, I suppose? Because that's the ambient daytime temperature here. Is that going to be too hot for a whole bunch of... Well, I guess if we're filtering everything, it doesn't matter. Like, we're going to render all the gases inert. This is sort of going back to similar to how we were going to mine gases previously. But if you have a pure volatile tank with no O2 in it, it kind of doesn't matter how hot it gets, right? As long as you keep in the H2 and the O2 separate. That's all that really fucking matters. Mm. Alright, let's think about this. Air conditioner filtration, right? Combustor, look at that. I'm excited to use all those things, right? Yeah, the air conditioner we've used for that room, but filtration is what I'm interested in at the moment, right? So if you build it like that, you can have two of these. As we've discussed, they've got filtered and unfiltered gas. So you can filter up to two things out. Now, truly, all that you really need to do is draw the H2 out. That's all that actually matters. Um, as long as you bleed the H2 out... You're laughing, right? The rest can't explode. It's all inert gases and oxygen. Okay, so 
We're going to extend this little walkway here. Um, I'm not making any more steel or anything like that. Not for the moment. Not until I'm comfortable that this system's safe. Because I don't think it is. Maybe three for the moment. All right. I was going to throw it on the ground. We can't do that. What with the storms and all that. So we'll extend our little sun corridor at least, you know, because this is a, our rudimentary air-cooled system. Um, I'm going to need sheets. Was considering doing this extending out yeah because ultimately well, I want my gas covered from the sun uh, but I need to be able to get to it so we'll just make a corridor through um, and hypothetically we're going to end up with two tanks here all right so there might be a way to squeeze what is this pipe looking like these days Fucking hell, close all this shit. Sixty degrees. All right, how do we integrate this system? Essentially, what's going to happen is we're going to build this in here somewhere. I have to think about where the pipes are placed. Unfiltered and filtered, which is such fucking terrible vernacular. Presumably, once it passes through this system, it's all filtered because it's gone through a filtering process. <laughs> you know what I mean? It should be mainline and waste or something like that. Um, we, we put a... Maybe we run that around the wall and under like that. I'm going to assume unfiltered is actually the waste drawer just because of how it's positioned on it as well. And filtered is the the stuff that is actually kind of unfiltered. But it's fucking hard to tell. Um, but if we position it like that, we'll be able to have a pipe come in here through the base and pass through around the back. Well, I mean, not really. I might have to end up moving the, uh... Okay, no, we could do that. Where does the power go? Okay, through the back there. Yeah, we could run it through the wall, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, and we'll just have to do it and be done. Alright.
Um, so what we need to now do is we're going to wall up this section and that roof, right? I'm going to build another one of these base plates and put it here. I'm going to have to move this one because I want pass through for that pipe. And I don't really want the pipe going through the wall because the whole point of this wall is to shield it from the sun. So we don't want a clipping pipe unless I insulate it, I suppose, but I'm not that worried. So we'll probably move this base plate here. We're going to put this filtration unit right here and rig the power through the wall. We're going to filter out H2 and that's it, I think. Yeah. And I'm I'm not I'm still confused by how the, the 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 developers decided to do this. It's I won't harp on it. It's wrong. It shouldn't be filtered and unfiltered. It's so dumb. But um, we'll uh basically, and I'll put double H filters in that just for redundancy's sake. But one of these tanks will end up everything else, and the other one will be H two, and that way we're safe that we don't blow ourselves up. The only real sort of dangerous spot that I can think of, but I don't know, I'm not sure, is in the pipe when when we actually let the the gases out, you know what I mean, through the back pipe. Um, like there is a hypothetical to, I don't know, depending on how I mix it, to have a particularly high concentration of H2 at a very, very high temperature, just enough for it to trip the threshold. But I don't think that'll happen because... If anything, we've shown me versus, let's say, the community, who everyone just is like, that's it, 2-1, that's all I'm ever going to do. Um, whereas I'm more likely to have more of an oxygen cook, which will burn up the waste, um, the, the waste H2. So in generally speaking, when I cook, if you want to call it that, whatever you want to call it, smelt, I should have a lower H2 waste coming out just because of the way that I do it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, but that's the one thing. I'll just, uh, we're, we're going to wrap up, obviously, but I'll, I'll leave it with that. Like, don't be just so obsessed with what the community tells you, team. It's a, it's engineering, right? And that, that would be, and potentially is in a modern setting, because you never know with Google and all that. Like, I'm obviously not in the engineering scene these days, but, like, don't just copy other people's homework. you got to think for yourself as well. And the two to one might be the cleanest cook technically because someone did some number crunching and worked out how it works, right? But as I've said, I, I've made some very good points against why it's not great. You, it doesn't burn at the levels that you would expect. It burns at a certain volume uh, rate that is probably hidden or just not clear, right? So you're going to have more waste volatile. And you're pumping more waste volatile into a system. And have you considered to make your system as, as robust as what we're talking about now? Probably not. Maybe it all just gets exhausted or wasted, but you're just pumping out excess volatile that at the very least, at the nicest scenario, you could recycle that for more fuel. But at the more dangerous scenarios, you, you've probably got more errant volatile in your tanks or floating around or causing trouble. Whereas if, like I said, if you did more oxygen and you erred on that way, you're probably going to have more of an oxygen waste scenario, but less volatile. You do hear about people doing this when they make their sort of oxy fuel in their burner. That might be a little bit different. I'm not sure how it goes if you, because I haven't really done that. But um, presumably having an excess oxygen burner is is the way to do it, right? I'm, I'm sure it doesn't affect the burn speeds or anything like that. Um, you probably just won't get as much out of that tank because more of it's going to be oxygen exhaust. But that's probably safer, right? Um, but anyway, but everyone, everyone's different. And um, yeah, that's I guess that's my one thing that I would employ. You, you always got to be thinking. And like in all of this, there might be something I've miscalculated and I'm wrong. And that's fine. I'm absolutely, you know, happy to backpedal and walk back from my theory crafting. But, um, but yeah, like, I guess, like I said, there's a difference between helpful advice and just sort of, you know, thinly veiled fucking do it my way because I reckon I know better. And, you know, I'm, I'm as smart as you. We're all smart as each other. We're all, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> we all have the social skills to understand each other. And it's sort of like, don't, don't pull that shit on me. <laughs> Anyway, all right, team, we're getting there. We're going to have to do this for a little while to be safe. If you think it's ex uh, overly safe and overly cautious, I've seen people whinge about it. I'm like, well, okay, fine. 
It's just like, I, I, I can't understand how people would be compelled to play engineering style games and yet not behave with like an industry standard safety level of engineering behavior as well, right? Like, it just blows my mind. Oh, you're being too cautious. It's like, okay, here, yeah, okay. See how long you last in industry. All right, team, thanks again for joining me. We might just leave it there for the time being and I'll catch you guys on the next one.